Hello, hi. My name is Dr. Karen Danvers Perez, and today we'll be doing a video about problem statement. A lot of students have reached out to me regarding how to write a problem statement. Please keep in mind that every program is different and have their own requirements about how to write a problem statement. So let's get into it. So first, let's talk about what is a problem statement. A problem statement is a clear and concise description of an issue or challenge that needs to be addressed or solved. So it serves as a foundation for any problem solving or research endeavor, helping to define the scope and the nature of the problem. So if you're doing, a, you're doing your DNP, you're gonna to need to know how to write a problem statement. If you're doing your PhD, you're going to need to know how to write a problem statement, a quality improvement project. Um, and it doesn't matter what field you're in, once you're going to do research or a quality improvement project, it's going to call for a problem statement. And again, as I said at the beginning of the video, that it differs based on the program that you're in in the school. And while there are certain things that are common and foundational in how to write a problem statement, schools have their own twists or turn on it in what they're expecting from their student. So make sure this video is informational. So just make sure that you check your rubric and know what your school requires for how you should write your problem statement. So a problem statement should have a couple of core elements. That is the problem, the context, the scope, the impact, the stakeholders, the measurability, and the desired change. So the problem itself, it begins by articulating the specific problem or the issue that needs attention. And let's look at falls. There's an increased number of fall in a facility. So that is a problem. For the context, the context, that is the problem statement provide context or background information to help the reader understand the significance of the problem. So with the example that I use being fall, you give background information that when there's an increased fall, increased risk for injury, um, it affects the patient quality of life, increase the facility um, expenditure because of the amount of money that they have to pay or even given service to the patient who have fallen and most of the time the facility have to foot that bill so that's the context given background information as it relates to the scope it defines the boundary of the problem specifying what is within the scope of the problem and what is not so this helps prevent scope crapping and ensure that the problem is well defined the impact a good problem statement discuss the potential consequences or the impact of the problem it helps the stakeholders understand why it is essential to address this problem so as it relates to impact we we'll talk about quality of life we we'll talk about the finance part of it it talks about health related issue as it relates to the falling of the patient falling so what is the impact that should be included in your problem statement? Stakeholders. It identifies the key stakeholders or individuals and group affected by the problem. Um, so for your problem statement, I talk about falls. Is this in an inpatient unit? Is this in an outpatient unit? Is this in a long-term care institution? Is this in an ALF? So you want to make sure that you include in your problem, if you're, if you're using fall, for example, that you identify that patients in a long-term care unit or patients in the inpatient unit and in the emergency room, all right? So you wanna make sure that you identify your stakeholders and your stakeholders can be the patient, it can be the facility, it can be the nurses, it can be the doctors or the healthcare providers in, on a whole. Measurability. So ideally, a problem statement should include criteria or matrix that can be used to assess the problem severity. Keep in mind, not all problem statements will have measurability. 
And sometimes if you do, it may be vague. And I'm going to show some example later on. So one of the things that measurability does, it allows for an objective evaluation. And last but not least, desire for change. It may express a desire or need for change or improvement. This demonstrates a commitment to finding a solution and is often used to motivate action. So problem statements are used in various fields, not only nursing, include business, research, engineer, uh, social science, and it is used to frame and guide problem solving efforts. That is crucial for you to understand that a, pro a problem statement is used to guide problem solving effort. Because remember, if you're a doctoral student, DNP, you're doing a quality improvement project, you have to identify your problem before you can try to fix it. If you are a student doing research, then you have to find out what the problem is before you can do a research on it, all right? So let's get on to some examples. So this is a healthcare um, example about a problem statement. So it reads, the hospital's emergency department experiences overcrowding, resulting in longer wait time and decreased patient satisf satisfaction we need to identify solutions to optimize patient flow and reduce overcrowding while maintaining quality care. To measure progress, we will track and, and aim to reduce the average wait time for the patient seeking emergency care by 25% within the next six months while simultaneously improving patient satisfaction score. So that is the problem statement. Now I'm going to break this down and show you the core elements within this statement. So for the context, this the context is that hospital emergency department is experiencing overcrowding leading to longer wait time and decreased patient satisfaction. That is the context. For scope, finding a solution to optimize patient flow and reduce overcrowding while maintaining a quality of life. Now, the impact the impact the problem has is that longer waiting time and it decreased patient satisfaction. So who are the stakeholders? Patient, hospital staff, hospital management, and possible even regulatory authorities and insurance providers. Measurability, the redu reduce the average wait time for patients seeking emergency care by 25% within the next six months. And the desired change, the need to find solution to optimize patient flow and reduce overcrowding. All right, so this is how I break down this question. It's a healthcare question. And I'm gonna put up another question, business problem statement. So let's read. Our customers, our company's customer retention rate has dropped by 15% over the past year. We need to identify the underlying cause and implement strategies to improve customer loyalty and to reduce churn. So let's break it down. The context, the company's customer retention rate has decreased by 15%. So this provides the background information necessary to understand the issue. For the scope, the scope of the problem is to identify the underlying cause and implement strategies to improve the customer loyalty. So this defines what aspect of the issues are within the scope that you need to consider. The impact. So the impact is implied in the, problems, in the problem statement. And that's a drop in customer retention by 15% indicating a negative impact on the company um, customer base. Of course, a drop in retention, the impact is a negative one. So who are the stakeholders? The stakeholders are the company, the customers, the employees, they are the stakeholders. And the measurability, you can see, the problem statement provide a clear metric for measurement, uh, for measuring success, because it said there is a 15% drop in um, retention. So when you're going to implement whatever tool or whatever thing you're going to implement, 
you can measure, you will know when there's an increase and how much increase will be considered favorable because you know how many percent there was a drop in. For the desired change, the problem statement express a desire for change by indicating the need to implement strategies to improve customer loyalty. So every problem statement should have the desire for change. It must be expressed in the problem statement. So let's look at another one. This is a, a question at environmental. The pollution levels in our city have exceeded the permissible limits, leading to health risk and environmental degrade, degradation. We must develop a comprehensive plan to reduce air and water pollution and mitigate its adverse effect. So let's break this down. So for the context, pollution level in the city have exceeded the permissible limit. That's a context, that's a, that's a problem. That's the meat and potato of the problem. The scope, that's the need to develop a comprehensive plan to reduce the air and water pollution. What impact will it have? It talks about the pollution can lead to health risk and even affecting the environment. Who are the stakeholders? While the stakeholders were not explicitly described within the question, because we're talking about pollution, it includes the city residents, the local government, environmental organization, and industry contributing to pollution. Measurability. While specific matrix are not provided in the statement, the fact that pollution level have exceeded perm permissible limit implies that there's a measurable criteria in place to assess the severity of the problem. So they're saying that it exceeds. That means they have something to measure when it exceeds. So while it did not explicitly say in the question, we know that there are things that can be used to measure. And there's a desire. They, in the question, it says a comprehensive plan is needed. So as I alluded to early on, that different programs have different ways in which they require their students to write their problem statements. So I'm gonna show you a couple of ways where I've seen other programs have asked for their problem statement to be written. And this is for like a QI project. So the first bullet point reads, it is not known if the implementation of the Morse fall scale would impact fall rates among adult patients compared to the common practice in a long-term care facility over 12 weeks. And this particular way of writing the problem statement, they wanted it to mirror a PICO question format. All right, and I'm going to do another video showing how the problem statement should definitely mirror the PICO question. The next bullet point reads, it is not known if or to what degree the implementation of the American Diabetes Association patient engagement toolkit would impact glycemic level levels in adult patients in a rural clinic. So these are two different ways in which one could write a problem statement. And again, always go back to what the requirements are or how they would like you to write it. Now, my next slide is going to show problem statement for research study. And you can see that this is so long. So a problem statement for research study have a lot of information inside here. It gives a lot of information and give also some statistical background and even include citations. And again, this is an example. It's not a real life um, research study information. So it reads, declining employee well-being among subordinates of novice mid-level managers within a financial service industry has led to concurrent increase in employee turnover. Insufficient employee well-being level have adversely consequences, including detrimental effect on team morals, 
substantial turnover rate expenses, the creation of dysfunctional work environment, and the erosion of the corporate culture and diminished customer service quality. So they lay out the problem right there in the first paragraph. In the second paragraph, you can see where they're given context to it. Notably, the financial service sector faced a particular acute challenge in retaining millennial employees with an annual turnover rate of 18.6%, one of the highest among all industry in the developed world. So normally for quality improvement project, the problem statement is not that detailed and long. But for a research study, if you're doing your PhD and um, your dissertation, they will call that your problem statement. Um, even though we're going to still adhere to and stuck to the principles of the, the elements of the problem statement, the problem itself, the context, the scope, the impact, the stakeholders, the measurability, and the desired change. You're gonna see that despite how the question is written, all of these elements must be included in a problem statement. And in a research study, they go way in depth and they're very detailed about what should be included. And if you look at the stakeholders here, you can see employees. It talks about customer service. So customers are affected, all right? So very detailed when it comes on to a problem statement for a research study. Now, I would advise you guys, there's a book that I wrote called Pico Question Made Simple. If you want help on how to write a Pico question, this book is a good resource for you. Not only that it contains how to write a Pico question, and I'm gonna put the link to that video because I do have a video on, the channel, on this channel, how to write a Pico question, but it also include the step-by-step -step process of how to write a problem statement. It contained over 200 examples of PICO question and also ideas of topics that you can use for your quality improvement project. So I hope this video was helpful. Please subscribe, leave a comment below. Let me know what other video that I can do that can help you along your journey as you advance. Thank you for watching.